like to call order this regular meeting of the Rathbone City Commission. Says, could we have a roll call, please? Sure. Mayor Sagata? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Schuster? Present. Commissioner Chavez? Present. Commissioner Giacomo? Present. And Commissioner Chatterley? Present. Would you all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. A couple of announcements. All city offices will be closed November 24th, 25th, in observance of Thanksgiving. Our next regular commission meeting will be Tuesday, December 13th, 6 p.m. here in the chambers. And our regular commission meeting for December 27th is canceled per resolution 2022-01. At this time, I have a proclamation recognizing the service of our library director, Ms. Thela J. Wright. Proclamation. Recognizing the service of Thela J. Wright as Arthur Johnson Memorial Library Director, November 22nd, 2022. Whereas, Thaler Wright will retire as the Arthur Johnson Memorial Library Director of the City of Raton, New Mexico, effective November 30th, 2022. And whereas, Thaler Wright joined the Arthur Johnson Memorial Library in October 1993 as a part-time library aide. And whereas, Thaler Wright was appointed as Arthur Johnson Memorial Library Director in January 1998 and worked a, a total of 29 years in service to the community of Raton. And whereas during her tenure as library director, Thaler was appointed by Governor Gary Johnson to a five-year term on the New Mexico Library Commission, where she served with great dedication and commitment. And whereas Thaler Wright made it her goal to expand story hour in more ways than one, offer group meetings to discuss art and writing, and provided numerous prosperous activities enhancing the quality of life in the community. And whereas, Thaler Wright exhibited exemplary leadership during the pandemic, providing curbside access to books, take-home learning kits, 24-hour access to Wi-Fi, and reopening to the public safely. Now therefore, do I, James Neal Sagata Jr., Mayor of the City of Raton, New Mexico, on behalf of the City of Raton and the Raton City Commission, Recognize and express appreciation to Thela J. Wright for her exceptional devotion to public service and her many years of hard work, professionalism, successful results, and dedication to the community of Red Hill. Witness whereof I have here to set my hand and seal and cause the seal of the city of Red to be affixed this 22nd day of November, 2022. Thank you. citizens present. Don't see any present. Let's move on. Item six, commission reports. Commissioner Chatterley. I attended the North Central New Mexico Economic Development District meeting on Zoom on October 28th at 1.30. 
The meeting started with a special presentation from the New Mexico Environmental Department on the Brownsfield grant opportunities, which Ratone is already um, aware of and seeking. Senator Roberto Bobby J. Gonzalez was voted to be given Director Emeritus status. We approved some budget adjustments, including one regarding the Great Job Great Jobs Challenge Grant, which will provide almost 6.4 million in funding over the course of several years, and another grant that's going to provide 500,000 for fire recovery funds. We also approved the AAA provider budget, staff handbook updates, and new board appointments, among other things. We adopted the new mark. MARC joint powers agreement that will create a statewide multi-council of government partnership. So it's, it's new, it's unique. This will help COG, all the COGS statewide be able to work together on projects and statewide challenges and opportunities. We discussed amendments to North Central's JPA and they need to, it's, it hasn't been updated since it was written in 1976 and they're looking to perhaps own property for the premise for their um, offices. And so they're looking to update that JPA so that they're allowed to own property, which is not currently allowed. Um, they would not be lo taking out loans or anything for that. That was one concern. Um, so that J change to the JPA is probably forthcoming. Uh, we discussed the aging and long-term services assessment closeout recommendations for the AAA, and those recommendations are being implemented as necessary. Uh, Monica Beta's executive director report, uh, she highlighted the Workforce Integration Network launch, which was last week, which is part of the great, the Good Jobs Challenge grant. It supports individuals in recovery, rehabilitation, or incarceration, and um, they're starting a brand new program. So they're spending the first six months hiring staff and developing a system, roughly about six months, and then they're gonna move into the phases for the program design and implementation. It, I look forward to seeing what, what that might, um, well, that might produce. That could be a really good program. The other directors of the various agent, uh, sections also gave reports. Some of the highlights were that the audit is ongoing right now for the fiscal year 22. Um, North Central is continuing to work on a pilot program, pilot project for Medicaid billing for allowable services for senior centers so they can expand their funding streams. Uh, North Central has helped members like us submit more than $24 million in grants since July. Not all of them have been awarded, but they've done a lot of grant writing. There's also a new USDA Community Facilities Technical Assistant Grant Award that's about $150,000 that we as members can utilize for any community facility related projects. Uh, they also talked about other items related to transportation disaster recovery. The next meeting will be the big annual meeting and that will is tentatively scheduled for the end of January the 26th and or 27th. It could potentially be a longer meeting, um, possibly some on one day, some on another. But they have, I don't know if that's been ironed out yet. And that will be in person in Santa Fe. Uh, the Senior Citizen Center did not meet, so I did not have any report on that. I did sit in on a couple other things. One was, um, the virtual public meeting regarding the Rat Tongue Clayton interchange process, and that was November 17th. Um, and I did put the, in, the information on my Facebook page, on my commissioner Facebook page, if anyone wants to still give input on that. There's still time. It looks like they're looking at alternative six, which is not the roundabout option. Yes. <laughs> so people were very concerned. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they're looking at the tight diamonds, new bridge option, I think. Um, I also sat in on the I-27 Texas Department of Transportation meeting number three on November 10th from 8 through 11 on Zoom. Um, it's a completely Texas focused group that was set up as an advisory committee, I believe through the Texas legislature and through TxDOT regarding the Ports of Plains Trade Corridor and the I-27 project. They spent a lot of time um, fine tuning their goals. It was really interesting because they are a very far along in their process considering everything. Um, and they also have marketing materials. They have all these handouts. I got a copy of those. I forwarded them to the city manager. If anyone else is interested, I can share those around. Um, they're not finalized yet, but it's just really interesting, all the different studies and things they did. They did have a presenter from the oil and gas industry that represented 19 companies from the Permian Strategic Partnership, which is the third largest producer of oil in the world. And they're very vested in this uh, project. 
They also had a presentation on international trade from Mexico to Canada. I found that pretty interesting. I guess a lot of ports in California transport their commodities through Mexico to Texas and ship them out um, that way and through the Ports to Plain Corridor just because it's cheap, cheaper and faster. They had some incredible statistics on the exponential growth of trade um, between Mexico and Canada and the United States uh, and all the new commodities that are kind of coming out and especially post-pandemic was kind of interesting. Um, the thing that I found most surprising is that technically there is no I-27 designation yet. They had only designated it as a Ports to Plains Corridor. Um, Texas is planning to submit paperwork in order to get that number designation, but they purposely didn't want it because they actually are desiring two different interstate designation numbers. Um, one that would be south of Amarillo and one that would be um, for north of Amarillo into Raton in Colorado. So um, I guess they have to, TxDOT Tex has to submit an application to the federal government to get those actual number designations. And they were, they, someone brought up New Mexico and, and they wouldn't even go there. They're, they're, um, they're very Texas focused, I think because of the way they're organized. And I have no idea how we would actually fit into that process. There's definitely a need for a New Mexico group to start that. That particular committee's next meeting will be in Austin in April. Um, there's also, the only way I found out about it is because I'm on, I've been on the, that newsletter for Ports to Plains for a long time and um, there's a, a sign up on their website if anybody else wants to join that. I don't know, you guys are probably already on it. But, and that's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Thank you. Giacomo. <clears throat> the uh, Arthur Johnson Memorial Library Advisory Board met on November 15, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. Li Library Director Thayla Wright reported to the board the pending buildings repairs. The status of the 22, 2022 bond fund, the computer works that have been completed, and the 2022 state grant in aid. Also, the elite customer solution in New Mexico delivered and installed nine new patron computers. This project has been in the process since November 20, 2021 and was delayed due to supply chain issues. The statistic report for the month of September 2022, donations collected were zero. Fines received were $107.10. Copies made were $358.09. Memorials received were $50. There were three story hours held with attended, attended by seven persons, and there were no programs for September. The statistic report for the month of October 2022, the donations collected were zero. Fines received were $134.78. Copies made were nine hundred ninety-eight dollars and sixty cents. Memorials received were fifty dollars. Story hours held with four, attended by ten persons. There were nine programs held, attended by one hundred and thirty-eight persons. And library uh, director Thayla Wright submitted her letter of recognition back in September 6, 16, two thousand twenty-two and plan to retire in November, or November 30th, 2022. Raton Public Service Company Board of Directors met on October 24th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. Robin Osborne, RPS Office Manager slash Bookkeeper presented to and approved by the Board of Financial and Statistical Information. After review of and discussing the board approved the resolution, RPS resolution 2022-12, which was the disposal of surplus vehicles owned by RPS. Also, after review and discussion, the board approved RPS resolution 2022-13, disposal of obsolete computer equipment owned by RPS. General Manager Dave Pincino reported on his recent power outage, which was a result of heavy winds and low odor wire connections. He also reported on the proposed solar project and the <coughs> reports starting to come in. That's all I got. Thank you. Commissioner Chavez. Uh, yes. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Schuster and myself attended the Raton Water Board meeting on November 15th. 
Lake Maloya is three feet below spilling. They're running primarily on the Cimarron system, along with minimum from Lake Maloya. Maloya Dam was inspected by the New Mexico State Engineer on October 6. It's still classified as high hazard <coughs> by general conditions, uh, but it was classified as serviceable. The, the ASR con controller was here the week of October 24th and successfully uh, secured the crest of Lake Maloya Dam. Lake Alice Dam was inspected and the repair is pending. The report is pending. Uh, the final Lake Dorothy uh, lease agreement with Colorado was submitted. The main basin at the filter plant was inspected and it was completed. Uh, we approved the financial reports for September and October and approved the resolution uh, 2022 October certification, certification of capital assets inventory. Do you have anything that you need to add to that? No, sounds good. Well, I attended the Raton Financial Advisory Committee on the November 17th and approved October financial reports for presentation to the City Commission tonight. That's all I have. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Right. So on uh, the 15th, of course, was the Water Board. On the 16th, was um, I was honored to be at the uh, Raton Public Schools Career Day, which was uh, quite entertaining, but <laughs> uh, that event takes a lot of energy, let me tell you. Um, then later in the afternoon was Lodgers Tax Advisory Board meeting, and they um, pretty much, uh, the majority of the meeting was regarding consideration of funding uh, print advertisement along with digital presence uh, to the, with the new Legends magazine. I believe uh, we'll be talking about that uh, in a little bit here on our agenda. The um, uh, Roger, the board members were all pretty much in favor of um, proceeding with that funding. Uh, the Bobby Joe Baca gave a um, report on the Dawson Association and the Dawson Reunion. Uh, there was a report from due from uh, Explore Red Home and um, uh, Patricia Duran's manager, you know, the manager of Center for Community Innovation, but that was canceled as she was also tied up with the uh, Red Home Public School Career Day. That's all I have. All right, thank you. As for myself, I uh, attended the New Mexico. I mean, the North Central New Mexico Economical, yeah, it's the NMEDD yeah. <laughs> board meeting with Commissioner Chad, uh, Chatterley. Uh, she covered that real well, as well as the NMDOT meeting that was online the other night. I was in attendance for that. And uh, I am also pleased that they are going with the diamond design and not the roundabouts. Um, City Manager Barry and myself, along with Mayor Lopez from Springer and Mayor Gonzalez of Cimarron, attended an online meeting with North Central uh, about affordable housing and housing projects and how that could be implemented and be a, a, an economical boost to some of our rural community, communities and, and such. And then uh, last week or the week before, I was in Red River with New Mexico Self Insurers. Um, executive board meeting. We're talking about uh, you know, getting ready for the new budget coming up this year. Uh, talk, we had some outstanding cases that, uh, that older cases that finally looks like we're going to be settling. And one of their big pushes this year for the legislation is like last year we got a loss of life for uh, Police officers to be one million dollars. We're going to push for firefighters this year to have uh, legislation in there for loss of life. We also did uh, had a report and a review from Ms. Moncaya, the safety coordinator, and what she's done throughout the state. Other than that, it's business as usual. All righty. Moving on to action item 7A, 
deliberate and act on the approval of November 11, 2022 regular meeting minutes. I'll we'll have a chance to look at them, I'm hoping. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. A second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. Any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B, deliberate and act on 2023 legislative capital outlay priorities, Mr. Berry. Mayor Commission, in your packet you have the memorandum that we first looked at on October 24th, uh, and, it, and this consists of, pro, of uh, recommendations uh, from the city manager to you, the commissioners, for your discussion. Um, I have listed uh, the recommendations, and I'll go through those real quickly for you. It's something we've talked about over the last couple of meetings, but at the top of the list is uh, Maloya Down Safety Improvements. I've recommended that we request capital outlay in the amount of $30 million uh, for dam improvements. Uh, number two, Bartlett Mesa Ranch Acquisition. Uh, I have put a number of $1,500,000 uh, to request capital outlay for Bartlett Mesa Ranch Acquisition. I would note that uh, in that figure, uh, we would plan on doing some planning and some development of the area uh, as well. We actually need $1.2 million to complete the acquisition. And as we talked about before, that has been purchased by Nature Conservancy. Uh, they have some money in this, but they are looking for a reimbursement of that, that amount, $1.2 million. Uh, number three, Kearney Film Production Workforce Training Facility. Uh, I had put the amount of $10 million. That would... Uh, include not only renovation of the existing facility, um, but uh, uh, construction of a new uh, building for specifically for the XR studio that we had talked about. Uh, so $10 million. And then uh, uh, a number of things following that. Public Works Equipment Replacement, $500,000. Civic Plaza Construction, $500,000 in drainage system improvements and reconstruction, $500,000. Um, we will talk a little about the Civic Plaza construction uh, later on, on, on in this agenda, so I'll look back to that. But uh, the recommendations in this memo are put out for uh, your discussion. Certainly you all have the, the say on how you want to go with these priorities and these requests. You can add to the list, delete from the list, uh, increase uh, or decrease uh, uh, amounts as you see fit. I uh, just want to get the conversation going. Now, uh, it is set up for your concurrence and approval tonight. If you do uh, approve the, the priorities uh, that you all would like to go forward with, I will start submitting those to uh, legislative services um, immediately. And um, one question, is this the order that you would like to see these go in, or is this any real kind of order? Mayor, uh, Commission, uh, the, the list here tracks carefully, closely with the uh, infrastructure capital improvement plan that we had approved back in August. In that plan, uh, we had listed uh, Maloya Dam Safety Improvements as our number one priority. However, I can re... re a conversation that was held when the uh, governor was in Raton and uh, uh, this was a face-to-face -face conversation that included uh, Commissioner Chatterley and the Mayor Pro Tem uh, Schuster and the governor said uh, these dam safety Im improvements for this type of money are probably not funded through capital outlay they're probably funded through some of the federal money the BIL money specifically uh, that will transfer to the state. They, she recommended that's the way to go uh, for funding there. So really, Mayor, I would say that Bartlett Mesa Ranch Acquisition and Kearney Film Production Workforce Training Facility would be the two pieces that uh, we would place priority on over everything else in this. Yeah, that's, I just, I knew what the conversation was about the dam and I just want to make sure, I think, yeah, the Bartlett Mesa Ranch acquisition is is vital, but also the, the film school. Absolutely. We'd really like to push that one. Absolutely. Any other questions, comments for Mayor? 
I completely agree. I think the film school is incredibly important. I know the ranch acquisition, we just need to help find a way to, to get that funded and finish that up. But to me, the biggest economic developer, developer would be the, the film school, and that would be a priority to me. I agree. I think we should move it up to number one. Well, and, and I would just mention there with a, an amount like that, $10 million, um, I, I think that typically people in Santa Fe would ask, well, uh, uh, you know, what's Raton's skin in the game? If this is that important to you, what's Raton bringing? And we may talk about that. Uh, you know, we did pass the economic development increment, um, and we do have, we're, we're hoping that in the federal budget, there is the congressionally directed appropriation that makes it through. It's it's cleared a couple of hurdles. Um, there's the potential of going back with a, with an application to EDA. I think there's a couple of things that we want to we want to talk about, but I would uh, I would guess that that will come up in the conversation in Santa Fe. Okay. Oh, Congresswoman Ledger and the governor have put their you know, approval on that project. Yeah. I believe it's a good project. Yeah. Any other comments? So I don't believe that we should have to deliberate and act on it tonight? It's, you, you could wait until the next meeting. We do have it uh, set for uh, your approval, but um, yeah, you could you could take a little more time if you want to. We really have until, you know, sometime in January to submit these. Um, so it, you can nice vote on that, that tonight, or you can uh, you, you could wait till the next meeting, or you could approve part of it and add to it later. I mean, you, the options are really open to you. Now, I mean, we listed those one, two, three on the on the memo, but I get the message that. Uh, the commission has got, uh, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily track with how we listen them numerically here. That's just an organizational thing, and it, it it goes to the ICIP. But I do get the message on on, on what you're saying about priorities. So, well, uh, commission. I think after go ahead. say after our discussion, I think our priorities are clear, and um, we, we could. I'd be happy to approve it tonight, unless anyone needs to think about it a little more. That's fine. Yeah, I think we, especially if we can add to it later, I think it's yeah. good to go ahead and approve these. I like to get them in the queue right. early. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, adopt the 2023 Legislative Capital Outlay Outlay Priority. A second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the legislative capital outlay priorities. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item C, deliberate and act on 2023 holiday schedule. Mr. Mayor. Mayor and Commissioners, uh, you do have uh, the proposed list of 2023 holidays uh, for your consideration and potential approval. Um, it is unchanged from previous years. I would just simply state that uh, generally the schedule that you see in front of you uh, is incorporated in our four uh, 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 collective bargaining agreements. Right. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve the 2020 holiday schedule. Further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item E, deliberate and act on appointment of court plans designee. Do you have a point of order? Did I skip D? No. Yeah. <laughs> I sure did. Okay. Well, I'm just <laughs> trying. Deliberate and act on laundry tax advisory board recommendation. Mr. Barry. Mayor Com and Commission, in your packet, you have a uh, memo uh, from Desiree regarding the Lodgers Tax Advisory Board meeting held on November 16th, 2022. Earlier reported by uh, the Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, the following is the board's recommendations. I'm reading from the memo now. A recommendation, the Lodgers Tax Advisory Board is recommending to the commission that $8,700 
uh, be appropriated to the new Legends production for double page ads in the 2023 winter, spring, and summer issues to advertise local events and Rat Tone's main attractions. It does note that that would come from the print advertisement line item. Any questions, comments? Looks, looks good to me. I'll make a motion to approve the Logitech Tech Advisory Board recommendation for the new Legends Production Magazine of $8,700. I'll second. Motion and a second to approve the Logitech Advisory Board recommendations for $8,700. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Now we can go to E. Delivery and act on appointment of Ports Complaints designee, Mr. Barry. Barry Commission, uh, since our discussion last time of the uh, application uh, for membership of Ports Complaints, I have communicated that uh, Michael Ann and I have completed it and sent it back to Ports Complaints, and uh, we're uh, in that process. I uh, told them that we would uh, meet tonight and discuss the name of the the, the designated uh, contact person for Ratone. It is a board seat on the Ports to Plains uh, board. And as we talked about, I think uh, generally a lot of their meetings are held in Texas. I don't know if it's uh, generally face to face or it's over Zoom. It can actually be anywhere uh, you know, between Laredo, Texas and North Dakota and <laughs> traveling up and down the corridor. Um, but uh, they are, the, with this membership, there is a uh, seat on their board and they are looking for a uh, designated Raton voting board member to be a, uh, named. Well, I would, you know, strongly suggest Commissioner Chatterley since she's set in on the board meeting already. I've been trying to keep up with them for like a couple of years actually, mm -hmm. reading and stuff. So I'd be happy to serve if, if you all are in support of that. I think so too. I, I had um, said I would be happy to only because I, you know, served on the transportation um, transition committee, but I will happily let you do this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, traveling. Only, I'm only partially kept up with what they're doing, and so, yeah. Yeah, I, I kept up with it for the first three years I was involved in this, and then we kind of got a little, well, as we became non-members, I guess. Well, and, and you'll recall that uh, originally it, it looked like the interstate uh, would cross southeast Colorado and tie in at I-70. That was, that was another uh, route and uh, through, uh, you know, whatever uh, process had occurred in the federal legislation in the omnibus uh, budget bill of 2022, it said that it would run from Laredo, Texas to Raton, New Mexico. And so yeah. um, I think that looks, that perspective is a little different here in Raton yeah. after that. Well, there's no objection from Commissioner Jatterley. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and we thank Good. you. And we thank you. Yeah. And we thank you. See if I can survive it. All right, so Barry, I guess we direct you to appoint Commissioner Chatterley. So pass that along to the organization. All right, item F, deliberate and act on Raton Civic Plaza Grounds Agreement number 22-G2796 between the City of Raton and the Department of Finance and Administration. Mr. Mayor. Mayor Commission, this grant agreement uh, comes following uh, an appropriation of capital outlay funds from the 22 New Mexico uh, legislature and awarded in their regular legislative session. So, uh, that occurred, uh, they, they adjourned back in February of 22, and it's taken uh, until now to get this uh, grant agreement. Of course, it's a little bit of a process. Uh, there was another award, that was capital outlay for Kearney School, and we have not seen a grant agreement for that yet. And uh, uh, really the thing that happens is New Mexico uh, funds these capital outlay, or funds some of them uh, by raising funds through a bond sale backed up with severance tax. So that takes some time between uh, the legislature and the, the governor signing off on that and uh, getting a project like this in on the bonds. So, so actually that has just happened. Um, this is for the uh, proposed Civic Plaza project. Uh, as you recall, we anticipate 
uh, development of a Civic Plaza type of facility on the El Portel site. That's a full half a block, city block uh, of area. So a large area. Um, there has been really a public meeting and, and we took some ideas uh, in it and we want to start to refine those ideas. And uh, what we do with the funding, uh, I will state, I'll read from the grant agreement, and it is $25,000.00 to plan, design, and construct a civic plaza on the former side of the El Portel Hotel in Raton and Colfax County. So uh, plan, design, and construct, that is, uh, uh, you know, has all of the steps in there, and you're not going to get very far with $25,000. You might so get plan and design, maybe? I, I think that uh, planning is, uh, is probably a good step. Uh, design, we could talk about some light construction. Uh, if we can see the vision down the road of, of you know, what will happen on this rather large site. I, I think this is, uh, this is comparable to a process we went through s some years ago with the multimodal facility. Yeah, and thinking. as you recall, it took some time to get there. There were environmental concerns, their cultural resources. Um, it, it was an extensive planning process and ultimately we got the facility constructed. Um, similar process that we're looking at here. Yeah. Alrighty, any other questions, comments? I'll make a motion to approve the Ratchin Civic Plaza Grant Agreement number 22G2-2796 between the City of Ratchin and the Department of Finance and Administration. A second. A motion and a second to approve the agreement. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item G, delivery NAC on resolution 2022-53, authorizing the certification of the city of Raton capital asset inventory. Looks like Michael Lance going to address it. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Um, I'm actually ready to present this item to you this evening. Appreciate you for postponing it for a couple meetings, but uh, we do have uh, the formal resolution. Um, I'll go over some of the inventory process, um, but the official action this evening would be approval and certification of our capital asset inventory. Um, this is a requirement uh, of the state auditor, so it does become a component of our audit. Uh, this year, uh, we did utilize Records Consultant, Inc., as we have done uh, since 2013. They do come out and perform the annual uh, inventory, so most of our assets have uh, barcoded tags on them. And then when it comes to vehicles and things like that, we just put the tag on the titles. So, um, in your packet, you will see, in addition to the resolution, um, I've provided you, and we can go over this just real briefly, um, this is a spreadsheet that I put together to track, uh, in the previous fiscal year, we had several projects that, uh, at the end of the fiscal year, weren't complete, and those are considered construction in progress. So I keep uh, detailed spreadsheets on each of these and we just kind of track it and then at the end of the fiscal year, if uh, the project is complete, then we can uh, record it and issue it an asset ID and record it in the fixed asset system. So you'll see that uh, we had total project costs just a little under nine million. Uh, of that we completed about 2.1 million and so those are the assets uh, or the projects highlighted in green. So we did complete the solid waste transfer station project, uh, the Great Blocks project, and then our electric vehicle charging station project. Um, and we did just recently in the last couple of weeks get the reimbursement for the uh, vehicle charging station. So that uh, grant through the VW Trust uh, is uh, closed out. Um, also, you'll see the ones highlighted in yellow, those at the end of uh, June 30, 2022, those will be uh, the projects that are still in progress, and so uh, the auditors will record this in the audit as far as uh, projects that are still in progress. And so those total about $6.8 million. 
Um, we did have uh, various other projects that we actually started and uh, completed in the fiscal year that wouldn't uh, appear on this, but it would show um, that I recorded them in the database. So um, you also have a, a memo from me. Do you not have this one? Yeah, oh, okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I wanted to make sure I gave everybody a copy. <laughs> so um, as I said, this year uh, they came out May 9th through the 13th and did our physical inventory. Um, attached to this is the analysis that breaks it down by the various asset types, uh, asset codes that we have. Um, pretty much everything is depreciated except land and uh, generally our uh, fine art that is not depreciated. So on the inventory analysis, the uh, database actually has 1,974 inventory items and we have 604 items that are classified as land improvements and buildings in the database. So on the inventory analysis, uh, part of what I do is we're required to capitalize any assets that are $5,000 and above. And so I generally take last year's report and I highlight the asset types that are the 5,000 and above and tie that back to last year's just so that I know my report is in balance. And so um, that's why I showed last year's ending balance <clears throat> and this year's beginning balance uh, do reconcile. And then at the end of the fiscal year, um, I do the same thing with the ending balance with the <coughs> assets that are 5,000 and above. And then we also run a depreciation report for the auditors and then a capitalization report and uh, those uh, ending balances tie as well. So um, just kind of part of the method to my madness. Um, also, I've attached for you the additions. Uh, you'll see there's two separate reports. There's the asset acquisition for the real property, uh, which we had about 3.6 million this year. Um, the large one would have been the donation of the Kearney School. Um, I did separate out the, I used the 2022 assessed value um, for the basis of that amount that I've included. And so I'll provide that information to the auditors. And then any of the projects that we just talked about that were completed during the fiscal year would get added to the database. So you'll see the charging station on there. We also had a, uh, airport improvement project that uh, we started it and finished it in the same fiscal year and uh, we also did the boiler at the senior center that was some emergency funding that we got from aging and long term and we also did an LED lighting project at the welcome center and we put a new air conditioning unit at the uh, library so uh, we have uh, accomplished quite a bit this year <coughs> and uh, looking at the list of items that are still in progress hopefully we can close most of those out in the next fiscal year but <coughs> as city manager Barry has reported we have quite a few more projects with the Sugar Eat Avenue and the East 10th frontage road those are fairly large uh, multi-million dollar projects um, I've also attached for you, and you can look at it in a little bit more detail when you have time, but we have um, the personal property, which um, we typically only tag things or identify things that are 5,000 and above, with the exception we do tag computers, TVs, things like that that could potentially be subject to theft. So you will see some computers on there. Um, vehicles and equipment for police and then on the disposal listing uh, you'll recall throughout the year we did bring to you a few resolutions for disposal regarding some surplus vehicles so uh, we did get rid of those and um, we did have a couple items, the last three on the list. Uh, we did have the theft of an air compressor at the uh, transfer station, the old transfer station. 
and uh, so we've identified that as a retired item. And then uh, the last two computers were actually personally owned by an employee and should not have been tagged. So oh. we caught that when they came back to try and find them, and the person said, oh, well, those are, that's my personal laptop. So anyways, yeah, sometimes they kind of just whiz through the building, and if you don't put a sticky note, it's going to get tagged. So, so we have to be a little bit careful with that. Um, so that's kind of uh, the nuts and bolts of it. I do keep a, a binder by department, so I have um, very detailed lists for each department's fixed assets, and so um, I share those reports with them so that they can uh, keep track of their assets internally as well. Is there any questions? Any questions? It's very well done. It is. It's, it's always well done. Better than it was in 2012, 2011. A lot of work. I can well, it's, it is. It's, it's not an easy task. I think, uh, you know, we've had a lot of projects, and so that was partly the delay of me getting this report to you, is just really sitting down and going through a lot of these grant files and reviewing things for accuracy so that we could present it for the audit. I will move to approve resolution 2022-53, authorizing the certification of city of Antone capital assets. Second. A motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-53. Any further discussion? All in favor, vote by sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item H, deliberate and act on juvenile justice grant budget adjustment request number one. Mr. Berry, I'm assuming this, and Kenucha will do this one as well. Yep, yeah, uh, Mayor, I would uh, pass over to uh, Michael and Antonucci for a discussion of this item. Uh, Mayor and Commission, in your packet, we do have uh, the formal uh, form that we must submit to the uh, CYFD to do any budget adjustments for this particular grant. Uh, you'll see later on I've also included it in our regular budget adjustment so that I can uh, make the adjustment in our ENCODE accounting system. Uh, this is just a line item adjustment. We're looking to take $11,000 from the Girls Circle um, and put that towards the restorative uh, justice program. Uh, you'll see the description that our uh, juvenile justice coordinator, Danielle uh, Vanderpool, has uh, provided, which I think is very detailed as to the necessity of this uh, budget adjustment. And it's mainly due to an increase in the number of referrals for that particular program. So um, it may not be enough for the entire year. We'll kind of Maybe after the calendar year ends next year, we'll kind of look and see where we're at in all of the various line items and maybe bring another budget adjustment to you if uh, that or possibly the Boys Council. Uh, that one tends to, to run out of money probably about March. So uh, we will reevaluate that and bring another budget adjustment to you again if we need to. I'm sure we'll see another one. <laughs> Any comments or questions for my plan? I'll make a motion to approve the Juvenile Justice Grant Budget Adjustment Request Number One. Second. Motion and second to approve Adjustment Number One for the Juvenile Justice Grant. Any further discussion? All in favor, vote by sign of aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Out of aye, deliberate and act on Resolution 2022-59. Approval of October 2022 financial report. Glenn, or Mr. Barry. Mayor Commission is pretty much the city clerk from this point on out to <laughs> the city treasurer. So. Okay. So, uh, Mayor and Commission, in your packet this evening, we do present to you the October financial report. Uh, you will see that as of October 31st, our ending cash balance in the general fund was $3 $23,112. I've also listed the ending cash balances and the remaining funds for you as well. Uh, we did have a, a pretty strong gross receipts tax uh, distribution this month. 
uh, for the month of November, which represents September business activity. Uh, so year to date, uh, with our general fund projection, that puts us about 16% above uh, our budget projection. Uh, the lodgers tax revenues uh, year to date were down about 6.61% compared to the previous fiscal year. Uh, the gas tax uh, has also uh, shown a decline compared to the previous fiscal year, but I think if we look at the 2021, uh, it's a little bit less of a decline, which might be a better comparison, so it would be closer to 10% down. Uh, but I think that, uh, as we've discussed in the past, just because of the increase in the fuel prices, even though this is based on consumption, I think that demand and consumption has gone down. So, um, and I think too there's a, a seasonal factor with both of those reports. So as we go into the winter months, those are usually the lowest distributions that we receive. So uh, possibly by the fourth quarter, I think that we could maybe see an uptick in the revenues again for both of those distributions. Um, also is the, um, let's see. Oh, I've also provided you with the gross receipts tax schedule. This one goes into effect January 1st and runs through June 30. So just a reminder to the local businesses, uh, if taxes are gonna change, they could potentially change either January 1 or July 1st. So we're not seeing any change uh, effective January 1. But with uh, the legislation that passed last year to reduce the state's <coughs> portion of the gross receipts, uh, we will see another decline of an eighth of a percent on July 1st. So just kind of alert everybody now, and we'll kind of <coughs> give some reminders when the time gets closer to July 1st. Um, I've also given you in your packet the cannabis excise tax. That one's remain pretty uh, consistent from month to month. Um, and as I stated before, we'll be using uh, the data that we've collected thus far to uh, submit a budget adjustment probably at the December meeting to DFA uh, to budget for those revenues for the year. Other than that, uh, I think, you know, we've been working real hard to close out a lot of these projects. Some of them will probably take a winter shutdown, um, but uh, hopefully a couple of them will definitely get closed out now during the winter months mm -hmm. and uh, get ready to start some more projects when the weather clears up and warms up. Michael and this came up in the conversation, but January 1st, the raton rate on GRT does not change, but on July 1st of 2023, it will decrease by an eighth yes. by legislative action, correct? Yes. So I didn't calculate out that amount for you, but uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to alert everybody sure. that, uh, you know, really businesses should be checking the tax and revs website every six months. Uh, prior to January 1st and July 1st, just to be sure. Uh, but we'll work with uh, KRTN and the newspaper, whatever we need to do to get some public service announcements out there. And even though the our tax rate goes down, the distribution that we receive from the state of New Mexico still remains the same. So I think it's just a reduction to the amount that goes to the state general fund. Sure, it would be nice to know what our online sales tax was. Yeah. 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 That would be interesting to see, and I don't know that we're going to get that information from Tax and Rev anytime soon. They're real stingy about it. I think they could generate it, and they just choose not to. Yeah. So I actually did attend uh, the DFA budget conference last week. It was all week long, and it was just by Zoom. So uh, we did have uh, David Monteith, who's the liaison. Uh, for tax and rev and so he did go over some reports that are available to us if we do the confidentiality training which um, if I wanted to get an increase decrease report I mean there are some additional reports I could get out there 
um, but I would have to keep up with the training annually, and I really couldn't share too much of the information. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I think if we definitely in the past when we've seen a decline, you know, we've wanted to ask those questions. Alrighty. Any other questions? I make a motion to adopt resolution 2022-59, the approval of October 2022 financial report. Okay. Second. Uh, motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-59. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Item J, deliberate and act on resolution 2022-60, budget adjustment number five, fiscal year 23. My plan. Uh, Mayor and Commission, uh, some of you had the revised one in your packet. If it was in your box, I put it at your chair. Um, with regards to the insurance proceeds that we received from the New Mexico Self Insurers Fund, that's the only revenue adjustment that I'm proposing that we make at this time. Uh, initially, I thought I had budgeted it under the wrong line item, but uh, RPS and water do reimburse us for a portion of the insurance, not the insurance, the uh, Envision IT services. Uh, we do share in that expense, and so I invoice them periodically throughout the year. Um, so those are the revenues that I collect from them. But anyway, um, we need to budget the 42729 is the amount that we collected from insurance. This was for the police vehicle that was totaled as a result of the underpass uh, flood in t July 2022. Um, and then I've also made some adjustments below to add it in as a capital outlay line item. I don't know that that amount will be enough to, to get another vehicle to replace it. Uh, that figure did include some of the equipment as well. So I know that the chief is kind of looking uh, either CES, state price agreement. Um, some of these vehicles are hard to come by, especially if you're looking for something like a police package. So we'll continue to look. Um, I hope that prices may come down in the near future, but we're just not seeing it right now. So. Um, other than that, uh, the rest of them are just pretty well line item adjustments. Uh, we are um, seeing some challenges with uh, dispatch and PD with being short staffed. So we've got salary savings that we're going to move into the overtime budget to kind of offset some of those overtime hours that people have been working. Um, but like I said, we've got the money and the salary savings to do that. So hopefully that's just temporary until we can get some staff hired well and you mentioned the self insurance fund uh, activity it, it triggered something from that meeting they're going to probably go back to the process of having to attend the safety meetings in order to get our dividend so mm -hmm. i look for that to be re-implemented no I, I think that's a good move um it was, it was actually a pretty good system yeah Yeah, no, I think a lot of the changes that they've made uh, at the Municipal League have been very positive. We now have a new portal for all of the insurance, and so we can kind of go in there and make our own changes and not have to send them forms, and it just uh, really streamlined the process, and I, I think it's going to be more efficient. So we're still getting used to it, but uh, so far so good. I, I like the new system. Yeah, they also brought on a new attorney full time too as well. So we are working with the adjuster currently. We did have a truck wreck into the uh, garage bay door at the fire station. So uh, we do have a property <laughs> damaged uh, property claim in on that. And uh, we'll work to try to get that fixed as quickly as possible. Of course, possible. that was our garage door's fault for getting in the way, right? That's right. <laughs> That's correct. Not a CD vehicle, I would imagine. I would Right. Mentioned. Right. Yeah, no, not a city vehicle. So is there any other questions about the budget adjustments we're proposing this evening? I'll 
We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-60. Adjustment number five. Any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mike Lamb, we should have got you a chair. <laughs> Item K, Deliberate and Act on Resolution 2022-61, Disposal of Surplus Property Owned by Raton Public Service. Mayor and Commission, oh, the final, final action tonight for the meeting. We bring to you a resolution for disposal of uh, mainly computer equipment. There's some printers on there, but uh, Raton Public Service Board of Directors did approve this at their last meeting. Um, they're kind of starting to gather equipment and uh, in anticipation of the city as well bringing one to you so that we hopefully have a truckload uh, when the time comes that we can can haul off and so most of this is fairly old and obsolete um, I would mention that uh, typically we erase or destroy the computer hard drives um, it could be something as simple as just drilling them but uh, we, we will issue a certificate once uh, that has been done as well. Good morning. Any comments, questions? Make a motion to adopt resolution 2022-51, disposal of surface property owned by Bretton Public Service. I'll second. Motion and a second to adopt resolution 2022-61. Is there any further discussion? All in favor vote by sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item L, City Manager Report, Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would report to the Commission that the uh, paving project on Colfax Avenue has been completed. It's something we've talked about uh, throughout the fall. Uh, I would mention to uh, residents there that there's some follow-up work uh, that will take place over the next couple of weeks, and that includes uh, backfilling the edge of the asphalt because uh, with the thickness of asphalt that we placed, uh, it's it's a lot higher than some of the driveways now so the city crew will go in and uh, um, make the driveways fit with the new surface uh, we'll bring some gravel material we'll be working on that over the next couple of weeks and then also an adjustment of a couple of utility lids that are placed uh, in the newly paved surface but uh, we're happy to have that project done just before the cold weather got here um, I'd like to mention the efforts of the Public Works Department. They have worked very hard over about the past six weeks uh, in doing prep work for streets that we have designated for chip seal resurfacing to take place next summer. You'll recall that uh, we had uh, two projects uh, funded and in place uh, to resurface more than seven and a half miles of streets. So it's going to be a very large uh, project It's going to be throughout town. Uh, and there's a lot of work going on by Public Works Department right now, and I just want to recognize their hard work in uh, doing that uh, here recently. I also want to uh, recognize and say thanks to the Family Worship Center. Uh, uh, myself and some of you commissioners that attended their first responders event that, that was held at the convention center last week. And so, uh, we join them in recognizing the efforts of our first responders and the importance of that. Thanks for doing that. Uh, also, another local company that recognizes first responders is High Country Meats. They've done that annually for a number of years, and they're in the process of doing that uh, again. So thanks to High Country Meats for uh, that, that recognition. Um, while we're uh, doing that, I want to recognize the efforts of Raton Water Works. Uh, they gave uh, uh, Public Works a, a lot of help, uh, extensive ex assistance in uh, clearing up the uh, plumbing issue that we had at the Shooter Theater. Uh, the, the, the plumbing had been a problem over the past couple of events uh, throughout the summer. It took a couple of weeks of, of work to get that cleared, uh, the sanitary piping. Uh, it has been cleared, and uh, thanks thanks to the help from Raton Water Works, uh, the, that work was very successful. Um, so that's one thing at the Tudor Theater that we have accomplished. You know, we are looking at improvements to uh, the pressure water system and the electrical system uh, as well, a little more challenging. And then uh, I would say that uh, we have a request for proposals that is in review currently for Raton's first MRA project. And MRA is refers to our Metropolitan Redevelopment Area. That's 
generally the commercial area uh, in our original town site, and we are focusing on the renovation of the Coors building. Uh, I would expect a, a, a review process of 10 to 14 days, uh, and then we'll be out on the street with that RFP, and uh, we do anticipate pretty strong uh, interest uh, in that MRA project from potential developers. Uh, I would pass along uh, a discussion that uh, staff has had with New Mexico Environment Department. This is in regard to a brownfield request that we've had uh, into the NMED. Um, the NMED has hired a, a uh, environmental consultant and their consultant will be in Raton in the next couple of weeks and they'll commence uh, additional environmental assessment on three downtown uh, buildings. Two of those we've talked about for a while, the J.C. Penney building and the brick building uh, next to it, the building we call the Giordano building. Uh, we have done a phase one report on those buildings uh, previously, but uh, there will be additional uh, environmental work uh, going on there. So uh, that's a uh, that's, uh, good cooperative relationship that we have with the New Mexico Environment Department. They did come to town a couple of weeks ago and they were very complimentary about uh, Raton's efforts uh, with all the tools that we've talked about as far as, as cleaning up uh, uh, vacant buildings and dilapidated properties. Um, one last thing, Mayor. Uh, I do plan to attend the New Mexico City Manager's Winter Conference in Albuquerque. That'll be November 30th through December 2nd. Uh, I got myself uh, in trouble and became the first vice president of that <coughs> organization. So I will be gone and attending that. Serves you right. I avoided it for some years, but it caught up with me. So that's all I have, Mayor. All right. Uh, before we close up, I, I would uh, like to, for the city manager to express to our public works director, Jason Phillips, our condolences for the loss of his mother. I, I certainly will pass that along. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Chatterley, anything else? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Commissioner Jack Moore. Same here. Jack, same here. Mayor Pro Tim. Happy Thanksgiving. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>